Welcome to Adventures with a Very Small Lathe. For the last couple of videos I've been using the Proxon lathe mounted on this backplate. When I first bought the lathe I mounted directly onto the wooden bench with bolted through holes. This kept the lathe in place but the wood allowed the lathe to move quite a bit as it flexed and trying to use an indicator attached to the bench was essentially useless. I saw products from a few other machiners who had mounted their small lathes on a more rigid base and they found that they significantly improved the lathe's rigidity. I bought this slab of black granite from the offcut pile of a local kitchen worktop supplier. The top face was already polished and while it's certainly not as flat as a measurement surface plate it seems flat enough for mounting a lathe. All it needed was a couple of holes drilled to match the mounting holes in the lathe. The supplier had offered to drill holes in it when I ordered the plate, but I didn't have the foresight to accept their offer. I made use of an obscure unintended feature of my milling machine. The screws holding the column into the base can be loosened, which allows me to swing the column around so the cutting head is no longer over the table. This allows me to drill precise holes into far larger surfaces by placing the entire machine on the surface, a bit like a magnetic drill. The lathe is mounted by two bolt holes, this one directly under the chuck. The holes are directly on the centre line of the bed and the mounting surfaces at each bolt location are ground flat. It was obviously vital to get the holes in exactly the right place, so I set the lathe on the plate to work out the right position. I made sure the handles didn't stick out over the edge of the plate so they wouldn't be vulnerable to being knocked. I turned the plate over because it's much easier to lay out the hole positions on the unpolished surface. It also reduces the risk that I might scratch the polished top while drilling the holes. The first thing to lay out was the centre line of the lathe bed at the correct distance from the front edge. I then marked the bolt hole position starting with the tailstock end. The layout is horizontally flipped because the plate is upside down. Just to double check I placed the lathe over the hole locations and made sure they were lined up with the fitting points. I bought this Starrett diamond core drill especially for these two holes. There are lots of cheaper diamond core drills available but I really didn't want this to go wrong so I paid a bit extra. I highlighted the hole location for Sharpie and added an arrow to make sure it was completely clear which side of the thick line the hole should be. I've never used this style of drill before or had to work with granite so I had no idea how much cutting force the drill would need. I made sure the drill was firmly clamped at three points to be certain it wouldn't move. The drill needs to be kept constantly wet for lubrication and cooling so I kept a condiment bottle of water in one hand throughout the drilling. It was immediately obvious the drill was removing material from the colour of the water. The drill didn't seem to meet much downward force at all and made pretty good pace cutting into the granite. The 
The build-up of opaque granite slurry made it impossible to see whether a clean hole was forming, so I stopped drilling and cleared away the mess to check. The hole looked very clean and the core was still completely intact. At this point the core was no longer visible and I could tell from the sound that parts of it had broken off and were interfering with the drilling, so I stopped to clear the debris. The drill came with a pin to help clear core material from the middle of the drill. The debris was fairly firmly packed in and took quite a bit of effort to clear out. The travel of the proxon is slightly too short to drill all the way through the plate, so at this point I had to stop and lower the column height in order to be able to reach all the way through. The first hole is complete and an M8 bolt fits through just fine. The second hole was identical to the first so I'll run very quickly through the footage. The drilling had left a fair amount of sediment in the holes and on the polished surface, so I needed a clean before getting the lathe near it again. A dry tissue removed the last of the grit and most of the water.
Before doing anything else, I checked the bolt holes lined up from above. The final bolts were installed from below to make it easier to tighten the nuts. Once I had the bolts in place, I placed the plate onto some vibration damping matting and tried it out. I needed to get the lathe back into service for the toolmaking competition, so I postponed a more thorough installation for now. The extra weight and rigidity certainly make the lathe quieter and also seem to help with the depth of cut. The next step will be to fully measure and eliminate any twist from the bed and properly determine how much better the lathe performs, but that will all be in a future video.